This week on the show, we're featuring Orange Citrine, an interview with Helene Witt, Moonstone under the microscope cam, Hamburger Helper on Why'd I Buy That, 19 New Jokes, and now made with All Natural Jacob. I'm an engineer who's getting into the rap game. My rap name is going to be 2Spec. Let's start the show. I should have started with the Irish clock joke. Time is an Irish invention. That's why it's called O'Clock. Or I could have started it with the Reebok pumps. Time to bring back Reebok pumps. But they're way too... Oh, I tried to... I tried to buy some Reebok pumps, but they're way too expensive because of the inflation. Which, you know, because... The pumps inflate. Anyways. Hey, Colette. Good to see you. So, Colette. Helene talks about going to San Francisco. So I thought that was interesting. How you doing? How's your week? Ready for another one? Because it's a coming. Whether you're ready or not. Here it comes. like hide and go weak oh man actually you know what I need to do stop yawning long day anyways really cool stuff lots of things I need to get a refill so enjoy this lovely citrine video Get ready to ask some questions. Merry Christmas. We're going to do a show next Sunday, too. I'm going to do the Ruby and Zoysite. I already got the one ready. I think I might do a bigger one. But when I get it done, then I'm going to send it to you because you're the queen of the rubies. Which reminds me, got to fire up the chat bot. Hi, Ziggy. How's it going? How are you this fine, fine evening? It's fine because all of you are here being awesome in your awesomeness and getting ready for another great week by recharging your greatness and helping others recharge their greatness. It's a good thing because you're good people. There you go. Chatbot fired up Motron. We're going to go ahead and get a refill. And I will see you in uh, 57.5 seconds.
Now, I didn't say what planet those seconds were on, so they might be, you know, like Plutonian seconds. Can't tell. Anyways, have any questions about citrine? I don't, because I shaped it. I know what it's all about. Actually, I know mostly what it's about. A Christmas show. Cool. Exactly. Very cool because it's, you know, the weather makes it cool. It's so cold. Brr. Oh, yeah. There's the end of that. This is this. This is going to be a quick show, too, because I got the interview to get to, which is going to make it a longer show. But I got a thing to do. I got a comedy thing to do. We are going to do an online comedy thing for, um, let's see, where's the next chunk? Chunking it up. Okay, uh, so I'm going to do this comedy thing with Dr. Ellen Wesley. She invited me to do a comedy thing for her Comedy for Community page. It's exciting. If you're not doing anything, I hope you can come. It's not, it's, it's like an hour from now. So I, I said it's 9 p.m. Eastern. I said about 10 or 10, 15 p.m. Eastern. Cause I was thinking the interview with Helene was 45 minutes. Cause we did run to the end of the 45 minutes, but a lot of that was her asking me questions at the beginning. And I chopped that out. Because it was just boring stuff that you've all heard before. So it really, it's like a 25-minute interview, 24-minute interview. Hey, Sharice, how's it going? Hi, Jacob. Unchat. Hi, Colette. Looks like orange soda. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Let's break out the uh, good old microscope cam The scope cam And I did Genie's Sunday Brunch. Which, I need to get my button gear and get uh, Jeannie's interview next. Because now that I got Helene's ready to air, I want to get Jeannie's interview. Jean Kim. Jeannie Kim. She's awesome. And we need to get her interviewed. I was doing her Sunday brunch open mic today. And that's when I talked to Dr. Ellen Wesley. Um about like going to Chicago and doing some comedy up there. And she was like, hey, how would you like to do the comedy for community benefit, Mike? And I was like, okay, yeah, I got to run to work. I got to air my show and then we'll do that. And that'll be awesome. I'll tell some of my, my dating jokes and stuff like that. I'm trying to write some jokes for Christmas. So hopefully I'll have those ready for next week. But anyways, um... I also talked to Linda Marcus-Smith, who actually asked if she could interview me. Ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, oh, yes, definitely. I will be, I will be interviewed. I will interviewify, if that's what that's called. And so um, I talked to her, and she does interviews. So I need to... Actually, that reminds me. Is the chat bot dropping Helene's links? No, it's a uh, wit. Benny ways. Is Benny Loco here? How's it going, Kiwi? How you doing this week? Let's pin. Wait, where's the menu? There we go. Pin message at the top. Thank you, YouTube administrator. That's Helene's channel. And her Facebook is also on, on timer as well. Okay. Now we got to get the good old fashioned chat bots going. We got to get the good old fashioned camera lit. Hey, Roski, Ro Roxy Rants, how are you doing? Me and my face 
always reading things poorly. Blasted dyslexia. So, Roxy, uh, Ro last, last time, I was going to say last week, but I wasn't here last week. The week before last, Roxy mentioned that her son was going to do some stand-up comedy. He was going to perform some stand-up comedy. And she posted the video. And he did the stand-up comedy. And he did amazingly at it. Swimmingly. Even though he didn't have any jokes about swimming. So this piece of citrine is so incredibly included. And it's got zones of color. That's why it's dark in some areas and light in other areas. So I decided to try and get the base of it, the shape you see there, to push the color around and help help show the color more evenly. And so I just kind of, I, I went with it, right? I was like, okay, what shape is this going to make? And I picked the top of it to be this smoothed over top. It's kind of a dome top, right? And then I went with the pill girdle shape. And then I 45'd it so that it would bounce the color around. And the ends, instead of just 45ing them, I decided to round them. I rounded them over and domed them. So there you can kind of see how some areas are pale and some areas have more color than the others. Because the citrine is colored by rust. Now if it's fake citrine, the color is going to be on the tip of the point down because that's where the heat goes. But if it's real citrine, it's going to be from the cracks up. And that's how you can tell that it's natural citrine. And this, is, this, this coloration is all near the cracks. Really cool stuff. I like it. It's got good color. That's why I like it a lot. And plus, some of the cracks give you that rainbow shiller effect. I mean, what else am I going to do with this material? I'm going to make it into some nifty included gems. You know? It's not being wasted. It's being put to good use. It is quartz. It's a citrine quartz. Cats and dogs, gems and gems. Actually, that reminds me, gems and gems. I wound up getting something in the mail. Here's the moonstone. I want to show this. I got something in the mail. I'm going to do a, a ninja sword unboxing. Is a secret package. Yep. An Amazon package. Mints. Yeah. Power mints. Little mints. Awesome little mints. Addressed to Jacob Jim Maker. Because, you know, making them gyms. And it reads inside. Happy, happy Christmas. Make it minty. Gem the gems. And you're awesome. From someone who you don't know. Mm. Thank you very much. Someone I don't know. For these power mints. Awesome. I'm excited. I'm going to do it. Another Ninja Sword unboxing. Fantastic. I love getting gifts. It's that time of year, right? Give some joy, get some joy. Which, this is going to be a joyous week. You got this week to get ready for Christmas. And you're going to do it because you're good at it. You're going to get it. You're going to get as much done as you can. Kind of like me trying to focus in on this as much as I can. So this is a piece of moonstone that I cut apart with the saw. Yeah, I, I'm still working on like figuring out how to process moonstone. See how it's kind of translucent there? Moonstone is a type of feldspar, but it has this shiller. It's basically white labradorite. And labradorite is basically black moonstone. It's a different mineral, but it's the same effect. So I'm going to try and polish this and get that iridescent fish scale effect to show. And on the other side of it, which this is where I sawed the stone, it's got these like bluish 
aquamarine areas. And I still haven't been able to figure out what they are. It's some sort of feldsparic mineral. And I've got a couple of other little pieces that have this in it. So I'm going to try and figure out what they are. Mints. Yummy. Nice. This is a hijack. A lowjack. He stole the show. He did steal the show. He did great. Davy boy, how's it going? What you up to, Davy boy? Do you have any questions about gems? Are you ready to make it a great week? I know you are. Because you're awesome. That's right. You. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. Hey. Get. You. That's right. We're talking about Moonstone. This is a Feldsparic stone. It's got this Feldsparic inclusion here. Very, very, like, layered. There's sheets of stuff going on. If I can get it to show... Yeah, those things. Planning on shaping this and some Labradorite too. But I had the tile saw set up. You could check my Instagram, see a little bit of the tile work I did. And uh, I was like, nope, we're going to slice this while we got the chance. And this, this Schiller effect isn't on both sides of it. So I'm like, well... We got to be careful. We can't, it's not all the way through the stone. We don't want to lose it. So as I process this piece, I'll show a little bit more of it. That's the sh the side with the Schiller effect. That blue area there. And then here is the orange gemstone. Up there next to Helene. Every show, every show I drop a gem. They're not real gems unless they've been dropped. It's not it's not a complete show unless I've dropped the gem. I need to put in like a chatbot command. Jacob, drop the gem again, and then it adds another one to the list. Okay, what are we talking about? Cool stone. That moon's ooh, the moonstone is neat. What is the dark area? I don't know. I don't remember. I thought it was like tourmaline, but it's not. I don't know enough about Moonstone, and I should, because it's a, sh it's a show about gems where I try to teach people about gems. So I'm going to learn a little bit more about that as we go. Let's, um, let's check. Check, 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 check. Moonstone is a sodium, potassium, aluminum silicate. It's got, uh... Sodium, potassium, aluminum, and silicon, and oxygen. Of the Feldspar group, displays a pearly, opalescent Schiller. It's an, an, an alternative name is Hecatolite. And what is it found in? Uh, the most common moonstone is of the orthoclast feldspar mineral aduleria. No, that's not what we got. Plagioclass. Let's see. Arme uh, Armenia, so that's where that's the location where they are. Australia, Australian Alps, Mexico, Madagascar, Norway, Poland, India, Sri Lanka, and the United States. Most valuable transparent moonstones with strong blue sheen come from Myanmar. Today, most come from Sri Lanka. It doesn't really have a very long article about it. That's probably why I couldn't find it before. Gonna have to find out what it is that is in this moonstone. Gary Green. How's it going, Gary? Ask colors. Right. Actually, I need to go to minerals.net and what was the other one, Colette? The other mineral min mineral mine minerals dot 
Oh, man. I wish Jeffrey Mine, Je, uh, Downriver Mining was here. He knows. Maybe he also knows. Why did I buy that? This is the wrong why did I buy that. Shame on me. I don't even have it ready yet. Okay, where is it at? We got... Hamburger Helper. Goes in the product slideshow. That's the Fruit Pop slideshow. And... Product slideshow. I think we have to reload. Okay, done. There we go. Hamburger Helper. Let's play a little bit more of the... Uh, maybe we can play some of this other citrine. I got uh, this lemon. You can see some of this happen. So, I bought some Hamburger Helper. Have you ever bought any Hamburger Helper? Looking down the aisle, they got the boxes down here. Can't even really see them. They're in the middle of the aisle. People probably know, already know where they are. They got, what else do they got? Some kind of bacon fresh. They got the Velveeta ones. Those are easy to pick out. They got the fancy ones up top. You can tell they're fancy. You can tell they cost more because they're up higher. But you can also tell they cost more because they got, you know, cursive writing. Uh, they got uh, some kind of pasta roni or something like that i don't know a lot of them have rice and i don't eat a lot of rice um it's like rice is bland so when i add rice to something it's like adding water to something which is wrong because actually i've been finding there are some types of rice that i like fried rice ooh, with the egg in there mm -hmm. yeah or if i take like white rice and i add some hollandaise sauce or like some brown rice with some good, you know, beef and noodles and gravy and stuff. It's pretty good stuff. But I'm, I'm used to saying no. Right. And also, it's like, how do I cook rice? There's pro It's probably pretty easy. But I do know how to cook noodles. Especially that hamburger helper macaroni and cheese. That's what I usually buy. I mean, it's a solid, it's a solid win. You got cheese. You got a hamburger. There's some macaroni in there for some reason. But I was like, well, let's go a little bit outside our realm. And so I saw the Velveeta. Ooh, cheese. Love that cheese. So I was like, Velveeta makes good cheese, pretty much. But I don't know if it's good. So I was like, let's not go that far outside of our realm. Maybe next time. Maybe next time we'll go with the Velveeta. I mean, the yellow box also kind of looks delicious. But really, that doesn't play any 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 bit of weight into what i'm looking at i i saw the name Velveeta, but really i was looking for the hamburger helper they got that little character on there that kind of cheers me up and i'm like oh yeah yeah that's happy but i didn't really buy it because that i bought it because i'm familiar with it now what i did do i was going to get the stroganoff and then i saw they have philly cheesesteak and it kind of looks delicious. I look at the picture of the hamburger helper on the box, and I'm like, okay, let's see. It's got the noodles. It's got the burger, but I'm going to put that in. It's got gravy and sauce, and it looks like there's plenty of gravy and sauce. So, um, you know, it's got some extra, extra veggies. It says on there, made with real cheese, which I don't know what real cheese is. Maybe it's some kind of brand name. Of you know maybe it's cheese that they scraped off of a fishing reel who knows, but it it kind of made me think well, I'll chance it maybe it is delicious cheese, and uh, so I went ahead and I bought it, and uh, that's what I bought and that's why I bought that, and actually it was good I mean I could see getting it once in a while, but it it wasn't better than the macaroni and cheese. I mean, I, cheddar's great. There's nothing better than a nice, good cheddar. Anyways, have you ever bought Hamburger Helper? And uh, which one did you buy? And why'd you buy that?
Mr. Weasley has thrown a tomato. Ron, you need to come to the tomato throw show. White cheddar shells is good. Ah, Buds and Hazard. Good to see you. Ain't been, it's been too long. It's always been too long. I hope you're having a good week. I hope you're having a good uh, Buds and Hazard. I hope you're uh, ready to make this a great week because it's, you know, it's Christmas time week. Talking about cheese, cheese stuffed chicken breast. Buds and Hazard just ran to the kitchen to make some macaroni and cheese, uh, hamburger helper. Tomatoes, all kinds of tomato. You got to throw a tomato in there, right? Right, Mr. Weasley? You got to throw them tomatoes in there. Bah, a humbug is, is buzzing him around. Yep, got to get them bugs, bunny bugs. Because that, that's the thing. If you get a bunny, they will hop and get the bugs that are humming and hopping around so um should i should i get the velveta next time or should i go for the fancy stuff with cursive writing on it that's what i'm wondering beef stroganoff had that tonight oh that's good it hey it's a good one you know what i really miss is the romanoff and the reason i miss the romanoff is because when i was a kid I don't, I don't actually know the difference between Stroganoff and Romanoff. I looked it up earlier and still couldn't find out. But they had this Hamburger Helper Romanoff. And I remember my mom was going to make it. And I saw it. And I, I ran to tell my dad. and he was, Or I, I was talking to my dad. And he's like, what's for dinner? And I'm like, you know, eight years old or something. And he's like, I was like, Romanoff. And he's like, no, it's Stroganoff. I was like, no, it's not. It's Romanoff. And he was like, I'll bet you five dollars. And I, I gra grabbed the box and showed him. And I, I won five dollars. I had a five dollar bill and I was pretty young and that was a lot of money at the time. Cursive is fake. It's fake cursive? Man, it's artificial cursive writing. Who knew? Why would they do such a thing? The gall. Okay, we're done with all of that. I want to get um, Helene's interview in. I'm already dragging the show along and talking too much. You guys deserve better. Uh, I'm trying to get the show down to about 20 minutes again because the 20-minute shows do better than my droning on for 45-minute shows. But anyway, um, let's do the interview, and then I'll tell you some jokes, and uh, you guys can have yourself an awesome week because you're, you're great, all of you. Every single one of you, thank you for coming by and cheering me up and cheering everyone else up. You're doing a great thing. And so is Helene Witt by telling jokes to people. So let's, uh, I'll join you in the chat here and try to remember my jokes, rememberize the jokes, and air the interview. Wherever the interview is. Where is the interview anyway? It's somewhere. I think it's here. Today we have Helene Witt, comedian, writer, star, and Beatles fanatic. And she's going to tell us about comedy. But first, we want to get to know her a little bit and ask her the question that we ask all our guests. Helene, if you won the lottery and you went for pizza, what would be your lottery pizza? Wow, that's so funny. I could make a joke like big stole pizza, but... Probably just extra cheese, I guess. I don't know. I guess I would put um, broccoli and um, pineapple, which people say is disgusting to put on pizza. Um, shrimp. You know, they in New York, they have pieces of pizza with a lot of crap on them, like salad, chicken. I don't think chicken. Did I answer the question yet? Oh, yeah, you did great. Um, I actually worked at a place that uh, we, we used to do 10-hour uh, shifts. It was an airbag manufacturer, and they would bring in a company to make lunch or dinner, and they'd, they'd do different pizzas. Like they had pulled pork pizza. They had chicken fettuccine Alfredo pizza. <laughs> they had a breakfast pizza with uh, sausage gravy on it and so, I mean, I, that's why I kind of like the question is because people can get creative with it. That's funny you said sausage gravy, right? 
Yeah. That's nothing that a New York Jewish girl ever had in her life or heard of those two words together. <laughs> Sausage gravy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's like biscuits and gravy gravy. It's white gravy, so. Yeah, we yeah. don't eat biscuits and gravy either here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to eat some good food in New York? I know you're interviewing me, but I got curious. Did you try some things you never tried before or that you wanted? So uh, I I did. I had a Burger Man burger. I had a 99 cent slice of pizza. <laughs> and uh, after I did my set at the comic strip, uh, Gladys was kind enough to invite me to dinner. And we went to Akura, a Japanese restaurant. And I was like, usually uh, I'm always looking for the burger on the menu, but I wanted to try something different. I had to try something unique, and also I couldn't read most of the stuff on the menu. I wasn't sure what was cooked or not, <laughs> so I wound up getting, uh, it said crab cracker. I thought, oh, I'm going to be cracking open some snow crab. No, it was a giant cracker with crab salad on it, and I tell you what, it was delicious. Great. Mm -hmm. That's so cute. They must have loved having you. Yeah, it was. I, I loved it must, being with it. It was fun. It must have been a day I wasn't there, Dawn. Was George there? George. The old man, George Saltz. Yeah, George Saltz. Yep. Yeah. He he uh we we connected on uh social media and uh he came to dinner with us and yeah. Yeah, hopefully he you'll be my, there when I come back he, in, in the spring. He was my comedy coach for a while. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, he went I up. did that my jokes, he made them better. Yeah, I saw on your YouTube, you're pretty funny. Oh, that's good. You never you remember seeing me at Gladys with you? I remember you seeing you on the Gladys's Zoom mics, yeah. Yeah, well, you said I'm pretty funny. I, you've seen me quite a few times on Gladys's. Yeah, yeah. I'm in a movie, too. But that We could talk about that when you interview me now. Okay, so uh, actually, let's kind of get into that. First, I wanted to ask you, what got you into comedy? Okay, I tell the story when people ask me. Okay, so I lived in San Francisco because in the... In the days when I was your, your, younger than you, I left New York because people were moving to California. And remember that song, if you're going to San Francisco, mm -hmm. you're to wear a flower in your hair. So my friends moved to San Francisco. I moved to San Francisco and I'm walking down the street one night after work. I had like a regular menial, no thinking kind of job or I thought it would be, it wasn't, but. You know, I just want to just have fun. So I'm walking, and that's why I had that job, which has nothing to do with your question. So I'm walking down the street, and there's a guy in a leisure suit, sleazy-looking guy with greasy hair, and he goes like this, comedy, comedy, comedy. He was a barker. Come to the comedy club. Comedy, comedy, comedy. And he, you know, it was the farthest thing from my mind. I wasn't thinking of it. I was just walking down the street in my new neighborhood. And I went in and he said, stand on the stage. Little did I know, that's where Robin Williams had his improv group before Mork and Mindy, right when he was taken for Mork and Mindy. And the other people who were taken by the scouts was Rob Schneider, Dana Carvey, Kevin Nealon. Unbelievable, that's who used to perform in this club. And I took wow. the comedy class and um, this guy convinced me to send jokes to anybody I want. He told me how do you send how to send jokes to famous comedians to see if they want to buy them or use them. And wow. I took improv from somebody who was in Robin Williams' improv group, and this guy helped me with the stand up. So all that happened from walking down the street and. Um, Robin used to come in because he was at the John Bellucci murder trial. You know, John Bellucci died, not murder. I shouldn't say murder. He OD'd, right? But mm. Robin was there, so Robin had to testify. So Robin would drive, I guess, from court home, and he would stop at the club sometimes. And the guy who ran the club, the sleazy guy, he would borrow my vacuum cleaner to clean the club. or. I don't know, upstairs in his office. So in return for taking my vacuum down the street and borrowing it, 
he'd tell me when Rob, and he, I think he took a shower in my house too, because he oh. like lived in the club. He was sleazy, right? Right. And in return, he would tell me when Robin Williams was, because Robin Williams wasn't so much, well, he was famous from Mork and Mindy, but he was hysterical to watch. So he'd call me and say, uh, can I use your vacuum cleaner? Robin's going to come tonight. So I was really lucky. And when we would do open mic and Robin walked in the room, we'd like get off, the, like I'd slink off the stage. There's a joke people have that's called, I open for Robin Williams. <laughs> oh, okay. But people say things like that. So that's how I got started in San Francisco. And then I moved back home in 1991. And, you know, I... Um, Went to, I heard about Gladys Simon, and um, I went once to her room. It was either called Hamburger Harry's or the her other room. And um, I'm not much for going to bars, so I remember exactly how it looked. Like even in college, you know, I, I'm not a bar person, so mm -hmm. I know how it looked. So I know I was at Gladys's. I just vaguely remember going up these steps. I don't remember Gladys, but when I moved back. When I got back into comedy, the only way she'll call you back on the phone is like, you have to bother a lot. So I just said, Gladys, I used to come to your room. So it's not a lie, but it wasn't exactly the truth. I said, I'm your old friend. I'm an old uh, person from your room. You remember me. And that's how she called me back. Oh. So I started going to the comic strip on a regular basis. And a lot of good came from it. Um... I went on Wendy Williams because somebody else told me about this thing. Nikki Paris went, Robert Siegel Lakin went. And what we did was we answered, um, am I talking too much? No, you're, you're fine. This is entertaining. Um, Wendy Williams people would have you on the street, but instead of a man on the street where you're asking the question, they ask you a question and you have to answer it. They give you a little time to know the nature of the question but it has to be a funny enough answer that they pick you and robin went like six times nikki went like six times you could watch them on youtube you know nikki paris from gladys mm -hmm. and robin hardly comes on but she's been on and um i was on th five times all together but three times in the street i'm very proud of it very proud because it's national tv you know it's a it's a credit yeah, yeah. She, yeah she, the, who asked, Wendy Williams wasn't there at the time. She would ask you a question. They would ask you a question. You had to answer it, and they had to approve of your being on the show. So it was oh, that okay. Was, so then yeah. they could come back later, and Wendy would ask the question, and then they could cut to your answer? No, but Wendy's people had to choose who they picked, and she, I'll tell you the Wendy involvement when it was on the air, she would say, and now uh, the person on the street. Oh, Whatever. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if she stared at it, but then Robin, Linda Marcus Smith and I went on top of the Empire State Building and um, Linda was new back in New York to go to Gladys's. Oddly enough, she heard about it from California, from Portland, Oregon. She took a train for three days. Wow. Anyway, she got, we let her go first, and she got Wendy to ask her a question, a different kind of question, right on the top of the Empire State Building. So Robin wow. and I didn't go, but I was excited for Linda to go, because Robin went six times already. Yeah, Linda, that, that's cool. Uh, we got like a, a nice community with Gladys's thing going on, and it's like, it's 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 a positive place to to hear jokes without you know like like people like ragging on each other and stuff like that. Well, we do rag, but we love it. I mean, it, the biggest insults I get are there, but it does. It's constructive work. criticism, you know. It's not like like destructive criticism. Well, Gladys is famous for insulting the crap out of people, so I'm not going to agree with you. But it's when we get over it, it's funny. Like sometimes I get on the stage there, and I just tell what Gladys insulted me with each time and it builds and builds that's the truth and the way I oh, got okay. her to, to kind of respect me I think is by making fun of what she made fun of oh yeah to kind of to 
to have that back and forth to show that I'm not yeah I'm not I think it's funny so it doesn't hurt me but she has hurt people and um you can say it's all in fun and sometimes it isn't well I'm trying to work on that actually because um the uh, gentleman I just interviewed for my show and aired a, a few weeks ago James Draper he invited me to do what's called a joke off session which is a comedy game show and just to kind of fill you in uh everybody does about three minutes at the top and then we get into teams and we get a, a word prompt we write uh, some jokes and then th by the audience's laughter we get points from the judges one team gets eliminated and this is the important part the two remaining teams go into a roast battle which i'm i'm trying to get better at and to kind of tie it in uh, one of the, the people I'm a fan of is Kevin Nealon doing Subliminal Man. And he used to do that Subliminal Man where he'd, he'd say something nice and then he'd, he'd, you know, subliminally say a word like, like Dennis Miller had really long hair and he's like, thank you for having me, Dennis, haircut. And then he'd cut to his, you know, news and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm going to try and do a little bit of that during the joke off session. We'll see. We'll see how well I do. Some of the roasts are insulting those roast offs. You know, somebody's heavy, mm -hmm. someone is anything. I mean, I don't want to be made fun of, but yeah. if it's intelligent, it's good. I'm not telling you. Clever, not to clever. Yeah, not mean, it's clever. clever. Yep. So you if, if you had. Short, you're, you know. Yeah. It, try to stay away from people's looks, you know. Yeah. But okay. So if you were. Uh, if if you were trying to give someone new to comedy or even just give yourself back when you were getting started in comedy some tips, what kind of advice would you have? I have some advice I got yesterday myself. You know, um, I'd say make a lot of friends so you can invite them to bringers. We have a lot of bringers in New York okay. that bring people. Make a lot of friends. Make friends with the people in the supermarket, the store. Call your old college friends, stay in touch, be on Facebook, go on uh, um, those social media things, uh, TikTok or Instagram, put jokes on there because what clubs are doing now is hiring people with a following. Gladys mm -hmm. had a young man named Matt and he won a contest imitating Sebastian Maniscalco on Jimmy Kimmel. Okay. And, or I think it was Jimmy Kimmel. And, and as a result, he went from Gladys's to like performing all over now. Oh, okay. And those TikTok and social media and getting on. Yeah, so that's one of the things. And you can't resist bringers. People hate bringers, but um, that's how I get on shows. The other thing I do is I... um put everything I do on the Facebook and it looks like I'm boasting, but the reason I do it, it's like craft cream cheese. You're going to buy craft cream cheese. You're going to see, Oh, Elaine, you're, you're performing all over. So then they're going to think she must be funny. I'll have to go. So when she invites me, I'll think, Oh, she's good. Like, it's like I'm an advertising executive for myself. I made it up. <laughs> no, it, it makes sense. Um, you, you got to sell yourself like, like uh, I was talking to Paul Hallisey and uh, I, he was like, I, I asked him, you know, what, what's he promoting? And he's like, it sounds like a commercial. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, um, you got it. You got to sell it. Otherwise, people don't know, um, you know, so so um, uh, a couple more things and then I got to let you go because we're going to run out of time. Um, well, I so did want to answer the rest of your question. I just want to say. Don't be discouraged. Don't be je jealous of other people. Don't get discouraged. Things upset me in comedy, and I wish they didn't. Yeah, don't get discouraged. I hear that because it's it's easy to have a bad set and then let it weigh in on you and um, get back up on stage. So I I appreciate the tips. Uh, so real quick, uh, have you ever um, have you ever been familiar with gemstones or have you ever been curious about them or have they remained a mystery your whole life 
Um, they're not a mystery. My friend is involved in that. She sold some to um, Bloomingdale's, which is a fancy New York store. Oh, cool. As far as whatever they um, they mean on another level, I don't know, nor do I believe it. But you could tell me. I'll be open to listen if you want me to. Is this oh, I, I just... Thing? I just I shape them as a hobby because it's kind of like whittling but with rocks, nice. and uh, I I enjoy it and I I guess I got into the collection side of it and it's kind of fun making my own unique stones and uh, it's it's entertaining. So what's your favorite gemstone, or what's your favorite color? Oh uh, well, turquoise is my main dramatic when I got my colors done. Oh, okay. Yeah. So turquoise, but then like Amazonite would also be because Amazonite is like a, a, a quartz chalcedony with turquoise in it. So it's, it's got kind of the same color to it, um, depending on, you know, you can get a lot of different, like there's, there's different hues and tones and so, so forth. Okay. So before we run out of time, um, what are you promoting? What what sh where should I send people? What what oh, are you selling? You want to see what I had from Joan Rivers because we talked about Wendy Williams. Yeah. I didn't really yeah. structure the interview to cover everything. So yeah, yeah. we can even Joan we can even do another interview again sometime. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Joan Rivers, remember I told you about the guy who told me how to sell jokes, send jokes. Yeah, to yeah. I, I at the would Holy love City to... Zoo Club. That's where that was. Where Robin was, and the guy who told me to come in. He told me how to send jokes to my favorite comics. So I sent Joan Rivers jokes. This was pink. I, I only have a copy of it. It was on pink paper. You see her name okay. up there? And it, it showed yeah. what the joke. But then I, my friend Bob and I used to study her so much that we taped every show she did, taped on a VHS every <laughs> night when she replaced Johnny Carson. So there oh. she is. She told my joke. And then fast forward to last year, I'm in a movie on the Peacock channel where I'm telling the joke. And Joan Rivers told one line of the joke. I tell one line and they put it together. They put oh, Joan Rivers and it's a movie on Peacock that's awesome. that people could see. So it's very exciting that I was on this movie. And um, the woman who put on the movie has a, she's a head writer. She's was on, she was a writer on Jim. Jimmy Fallon, she she's in Shrill. Yeah, uh, Joan Firestone, I think. Yeah, how'd you know, Joe? Yeah, how'd yeah. You know who I meant? Because uh, I, I looked it up. You sent me the link, and then and then I checked it out. I was like, oh yeah, I, I recognize that name. Oh my God, she's a young girl like you. Well, you're a boy, but young young person like you. And she she once said to me, you know, I bring a lot of people to her her class. We're in the senior center class, and oh, cool. she said, Lane. You have doubled this class. And I go, Joe, you have doubled my career. Because <laughs> I've been in three other movies because of her little movies. But that one w went all the way to the Critics' Choice Award. And Ziggy's in it. He's wow. from Gladys. Tom Padavano's in it. Because I brought them to the class. It's a senior center class. Like you go to the senior center for mm -hmm. lunch or to do art. We went to the comedy class on Zoom. And we end up in this friggin' movie. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay, so um, before we run out of time, uh, so you're a Beatles fan, right? Yeah, I have a Beatle room. I used to wait for the Beatles at Abbey, at Abbey Road. Oh, I picked cool. this Beatles with the Beatles here. There's Paul. That's Legos, but there's John up there. I don't know if you can see it, the little one. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul and I, whatever the good English is. And I was um, in college, and I, I was still a fanatic, so I went and stood there for the rest of my life. But I decided to come home because my parents paid for college, and three kids in college, I felt guilty. But that's how fanatic, and I'm still still a Beatle fanatic, and my friends are Beatle fanatics. The whole room is Beatle. Well, I remember, I remember, you know, a lot of bands will have like a greatest hits album and the Beatles greatest hits album is like two full CDs and there's even more good stuff. Like they, they, they didn't even have enough room to put, it's like all of its greatest hits, you know? Are you kidding? That's a funny thing you said for a young person to say, because there are like 40 albums. I mean, they just 
are reissuing them now and we're all buying the box sets. <laughs> $300. So what you said is very funny. They were prolific. Lots lots of songs and, and really good songs and a unique sound too. That was, that was Everything the thing. was different all the time. But what I love is when I go in the car and I have a Beatles station and I just like when John and Paul harmonize, I have to drive four hours. But if I could hear John and Paul harmonizing, I'm happy. It's more like four minutes, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Can I just show you this funny letter? It's from Joan Rivers' office. Sure, yeah. Um, I sent those jokes all the time, and it said, that's the pink stationery I was talking oh, about. Oh, I, yeah, I see. It matches your shirt. Oh, thank you. It says that... Um, that my jokes were found behind her cabinet when they moved the office. Oh, wow. Feel free to submit any new material. But I thought that was hysterical. I'm waiting and waiting to see if she would buy more jokes, only to find a letter in 2000 that says, <laughs> we found your jokes behind the cabinet. <laughs> and if you used to watch her, um, one of her um, shows, she used to have like three shows before she died. It's a, um, what do they call those reality show? And it says Sabrina. Mm -hmm. Sabrina was the lady, her assistant on the um, reality show. Oh, wow, that's cool. You're hobnobbing. Well, I love Joan Rivers. and um, She was talented, yeah. She's dead. She, 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 was, uh, she was a hit. Um, and so are you, Helene. I, I, you know, I really, I didn't. I didn't know you before the interview, and now I know a little bit more about you. Not enough. I'd like to do this again sometime, so um, we'll we'll have to schedule something. Um, I wanted to uh, let you know that I'm going to air this probably in about four weeks, and I'll send you the links um, in 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 Facebook, and uh, I'll I'll post your links. Uh, during the live stream so that everybody can can follow you on uh, YouTube and and learn more about you and and um I want to thank you for for coming by and hanging out with me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and a privilege and I want you to join that thing I told you about. Joking. Yeah. You know, yeah, the joke the joke Ruthie Zoom. Goes, Ruthie goes from Ruthie and Ziggy and Tom. Okay, definitely cuz I I've been busy the last couple of days, but I was checking that out. And actually, I want to apply to that. I just, you know, it's like one thing after another, after another. And then uh, uh, I was finally able to get 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 here and get this interview. I got to boil some salsa and get that in the mail. Do you know I make salsa? No, you get, <laughs> put it in the mail? Oh, that's, a, that's another thing. See, I shape the gems. And when I grind the gems, there's powder that comes off of them. It's called tailings. And I was dumping that on my garden. The short story is I found out that they're minerals that help the plants grow. So I put together a recipe of 22 different stones, had it tested and approved by the Department of Agriculture. And yeah. every year I grow a vegetable garden that I use to make salsa. And so I ship that out to my fans. I'll bring you some when I, when I come out. Um, if, I'll if buy you like it from you. I'll invest in it. Okay, absolutely. You are a man of many treasures. Yeah, tre treasures, talking about gemstones. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right, you. stay in touch, Helene, and um, I'll send you the links, and we'll we'll definitely have to do this again sometime. Yeah, and I'll get you on a 14,000 podcast if you want to come on them. Absolutely, yeah, totally. Thank you so much, Helene. And I'll get you some comics for yours. You probably have a lot. I'm just getting started with it. But uh, keep keep them coming. Thank you very much. I, will. I have hundreds of them. Bye. Bye. Well, she was a fun guest. A lot of cool things um, that she has to talk about. We actually could probably talk for a few hours. It's hard to fit the interviews into just 20 minutes. Because I, I tend to get sidetracked on stuff. You know what else I have? Some bushes. Yeah. And I want to prune those bushes. So I signed up for some pruning lessons. But there weren't very many details on the, cr on the class. Turns out we're not learning about... 
What the pruning lessons aren't about how to trim hedges. I thought they might be about learning how to eat prunes and poop, which sounds like yoga class. But it turns out the pruning lessons were just all of us sitting in a tub until our skin shriveled up. Reading makes me sick because I'm illiterate. No, reading... I need to rewrite that one. Reading makes me sick. I guess that makes me illiterate. I'm an engineer who's getting into the rap game, and my street name is 2Spec. Let's see. I see that a lot of people are getting into the artificial intelligence artwork. And it has me wondering if that works on genitalia pics. I was shopping and found a make your own soft serve ice cream machine. Yeah. And it looks so good. It started to make me wonder, you know, I'm going to, if I get this make your own soft serve ice cream machine i'm i'm gonna eat a lot more soft serve ice cream i'm probably gonna eat so much that it kills me I'll, I'll probably eat so much that i'll die so it had me wondering if the simple act of buying this machine would lead to my death at least it would be a happy death i don't like to be bothered while i'm on the toilet because technically i'm on duty I miss going to Walmart at 3 a.m. That's my people, you know? Only pe But the only people who go to Walmart at 3 a.m. are people like me. Stoners with no money, playing with the displays. And Walmart's like, no, you can buy your little Debbies in the daytime. I was thinking that uh, they need to bring back the Reebok pumps but they'd probably be way too expensive because of the inflation. Someone took the air right out of me, which is good because I'm usually a windbag. Time is an Irish invention. That's why it's called O'Clock. Which singer can truly cut the mustard? Celine Dijon. I thought about joining OnlyFans, but it seems like hard-earned money. Uh, let's see. I asked a girl if she wanted to go on a date. She said, let me check your view count on YouTube. Yeah, that date's not happening. Uh, let's see. James Cagney's favorite pasta dish is You Dirty Ratatouille. Um, oh. Getting close to that time. Okay. A group of psychiatrists are forming an improv group called Schizophrenia. Because it's an improv group and they do skits. Ophrenia. Uh, when is Elon Musk coming out with a cologne? It'll probably be called O de Musk Musk. Let's see... I was thinking about, okay, this isn't really a joke. It's just a note. I'm trying to remember what I said. So this is about, uh, you know, like, what if a rape whistle was a slide whistle? That was also a sword. We just call it the rapier whistle. You could, like, blow on the whistle and stab him with the sword at the same time. That just seems like a good idea, right? Uh, I took a girl, let's see, I don't know if I told this one or not. It's not in my notes. I know I told it on the Tuesday show, but I don't know if I told it on the Amazonite show. So here it goes. Let's see, I, I took a girl on a date and, uh, it was great. She wanted to go to Taco Bell. So I'm like, this is fantastic. You know, it's cheap, affordable. 
She's easy on easy on my wallet and easy on the eyes. And everything was going well, you know. We're on the way home. And uh, she's telling me a story. She's jawing. She's flapping her lips. She's making noise and, and telling me all about this stuff. And, and then she passes gas. And uh, she just kept talking. Didn't even pay attention to it. Acted like nothing happened, you know? And I didn't want to embarrass her, so I, I just, I didn't say anything either. I just pretended like it didn't happen. But the windows were up. And then my eyes started to water. And my nose started to turn red. And I was foaming at the mouth. I really needed to do something, you know? I'm hacking and coughing and, and sweating and... I don't know if I should roll the windows down or not, you know. But at the same time, I don't want her to think I'm into that sort of thing, you know. Before you know it, she's ripping ripe ones left and right and shoving me under the covers for a Dutch oven and bringing home Limburger cheese to try and impress me. And so I had to think quick. I had to think fast. So I muscled up and, and ripped a loud one. And uh, then I rolled the windows down for me. But it wasn't fast enough, because she said she had never smelled anything so awful. Needless to say, I didn't get a second date, but I did get a second air freshener. Who doesn't love a good fart joke, right? Let's see, what else do I got? Um... I think I got three more. I went to the Gentleman's Club. For my birthday. It was weird. It was uh, kind of discomforting. You know. There and the other guys are there. And it's like that guy, that guy, that guy. Me, the next guy, the next guy. And you know, it's weird. It's it's un I'm uncomfortable. But that's alright. The more you do something, the more comfortable you get with it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep going back. Again and again. As many times as it takes. And I don't just like to, you know, sit there. I don't want to, you know, just sit there. I, I like to throw the dollars while I'm there. You know, those girls work hard. Work, they're, they're working. They're trying to earn some money. Uh, so I'm going to throw them some dollars. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get some attention. And, and that's all right. I'll, I'll suffer through it. I'll, 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 I'll tough it out for personal growth reasons. You know, and, and plus I'm supporting them. They twerk hard for their money. Let's see, what else do I got? I think I did that one better earlier. You got to check out Jeannie's Sunday Brunch Open Mic. Um, oh, I had a, a chicken. I had a roast chicken. And I tell you, if that chicken knew he was going to be a rotisserie, he'd be turning over in his grave. Which reminds me, someone said I'm chicken like it's a bad thing. But I love chicken. I told them they can cover me with ranch. And then they, I said, if I'm chicken, then you should cover me with ranch and eat me. And they should also join us all. Did I get them all? Yeah, I got them all. Which means that they're going to join it. They should join us all next week for the joke portion of the program. I wonder if I should do that before the interview because I have more energy then. I'm getting to the end of the day. But that's all right. I got to energy up. I got to get some salsa in me, right? Thank you all for hanging out and joining me for all the awesomeness that we have for the jokes and the interview and the gems and the Taco Bells. What about the Wendy show? The Wendy show. I don't know what you're talking about. Talking about the tomato throw show. You guys are all fantastic. Okay, so we're going to eat a mint, and then we're going to call it a show. It's only fitting that I'm partially blue. This is a power mint. It has lucky numbers on it. It says, my teddy bear, whatever that means. It's a very minty mint. Oh, it's a greenish, bluish mint. It's translucent. Ooh, you know what I need to do is facet one of these into a gem. Wouldn't that be fun? 
chew the mint so it gets stuck in my teeth and I can't perform. Okay. Okay. It cracks. So it's like a lozenge. Ooh-wee. Ah, it's powerful. Ooh. I will wake you up. Ooh. What do they make these with? Vicks Vapor Rub? Ooh. Man. Ha. <sighs> That's a powerful mint. This is the kind of mint that you give to, like, an alcoholic who hasn't brushed their teeth in a million years. Wow. I'm brave. Oh, man. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. Oh, it's fresh. Oh. Huh. One hundred percent mint oil, one hundred percent peppermint, one hundred percent spearmint. It is like a mint spear to the throat. Menthol. Mixed vapor rub. It's like a yeah, it's like a mint it's like a spear of mint right down your throat. Ooh. <sighs> My eyes are watering. Yeesh. Ah, thank you, secret admirer, for these lovely, powerful mints, which are going to come in very nice. I should eat one after each show and see if I can get used to them. <laughs> Oh, maybe next show I'll eat two of them. I'll turn into Super Mint Jake. Whew. Yeah, I like them too, man. They're great. Thanks, Kiwi. Thanks, Colette. Thank you, Cherise. Thank you, Mr. Ron Weasley. Thank you, Buds and Hazard. Thank you, Roxy Rants. You guys are all fantastic. Thanks for coming by, Gary. I'm glad I caught y'all. Uh, let's see, who am I missing? Davy Boy came by and said hello. And Ziggy. Ziggy came by. How's it going, Ziggy? And Glitchy Slime. You guys are all fantastic. And you are all fantastic. Yeah, you. whether you're here now or whether you're here later, you're all awesome. I hope you're ready to have a great week. And I hope that I get to see you next week and every week at 9 p.m. Eastern. <laughs>